Well, from the uh, last video on this series for the uh, 1970 Mercedes 280 SE brake and axle job, I got the uh, parking brake shoes all installed and now they're properly adjusted. There's a star wheel in here that you can adjust just like you can on regular drum brakes on a standard American car. And I went ahead and rebuilt the caliper on this side. You can see I've got the, uh, it's got the new dust boots and the uh, inner piston seal inside here and got the brake line all installed and got some of the uh, anti-corrosion um, coating on there to keep that from rusting so this caliper and of course it's all cleaned up inside and I also cleaned up the rotor as best I could this was the rotor that was uh, cherry red and this caliper is basically ready for the brake pads so now that I've gone through that process um, on this side, I can uh, share some lessons learned and um, show you guys how to rebuild the caliper that came off of the passenger side. There wasn't really anything wrong on that side, but I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this caliper anyway, just for completeness. And you can see, the dust boots are all worn and cracked, especially on this side and that could let water get inside here around that piston and cause a piston to seize in its bore and basically had the same problem that I had on the driver's side. So I'm going to go ahead and um, rebuild this as well too and that way I've got a completely new brake system in the back. And um, to get started one of the first things you have to do is see how to get these pistons out of here how to force these pistons out they're forced all the way back on their bores in order to get the uh, brake pads out to get the caliper off. And uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to take some uh, compressed air. I have it right now. I have the regulator set for about 75 pounds. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, but um, I'll keep ramping up little by little and uh, until I can get these pistons out. And we'll just take some compressed air and uh, go in through the brake line fitting and um, gently try to push these pistons out like this and we'll try to do that in a controlled fashion. I've got these uh, two pieces of wood here that I can uh, insert in between them. I can either do one or I can do both. Just uh, some kind of um, method has to be used to uh, control the movement of the pistons so they don't go shooting out down the street and you never see them again. So um, let me get set up here and we'll uh, get the compressed air and we'll begin the uh, disassembly of this brake caliper. Okay, I got the camera all zoomed in and I uh, had a little bit of a change of heart. I'm going to go ahead and use these older brake pads that got burned up actually. They're no good anymore. And um, it will give me uh, just enough space in there to get the pistons started out of their bores. And uh, we'll see how this works. And it looks like I might have to ramp up the pressure a little bit, shooting out some brake fluids. So let me do that and be back. Okay, now I got it up to around 110 pounds. And we'll see if that's going to be enough pressure. This is actually a typical problem with these uh, older calipers because they do tend to have some corrosion inside. They're a little bit tricky to get apart. Saw a little bit of movement there, but still not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run it up to about 150 pounds and see what happens. Okay, 150 pounds. Third try. Let's see if the uh, third time's a charm. No, those pistons are pretty stuck. Here they go. Alright, you saw, hopefully you, I captured a lot of that on the video. You saw the pistons move out very slowly. Brake pads are a little close together, but that's alright. That piston's ready to come out. I think what I'll do is I'll put a C-clamp on this one to 
keep that from popping out all the way. And then we'll try to work on this other piston. Nah. Not gonna come out. There it goes. Wow, those are really tough to move. Slowly let the air bleed out so I get brake fluid everywhere. Okay, now these pistons are uh, pushed out just far enough to uh, get these dust boots off of here. And there's a little ridge around these pistons. I think I could get a screwdriver in there and uh, work them out completely and uh, start the disassembly process. And uh, these pistons are actually coming out harder than they did on the uh, side where the uh, rotor was cherry red. So this caliper was probably going to fail at any minute. So I'm definitely glad I went ahead and decided to go ahead and uh, rebuild this thing. It, they should come out, those pistons should move back and forth a lot easier than that. You shouldn't have to have the air pressure quite so high. So um, next, let me get a uh, tool and see if I can get these pistons off, uh, the dust boots off. All right, now that uh, the pistons are moved out, I've already got one of the dust boots started. We can go ahead and uh, work that off with a screwdriver. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's go ahead and work it off the piston. And it's pretty much shot. Now you can see why that piston was so hard to get out. You can see this chrome surface has a little bit of rust on it, a little bit of corrosion. But we also have this ridge here that we can take advantage of and use a couple of screwdrivers and uh, pry that piston out. If all goes well, Yeah, I've got nothing to leverage against. So let me uh, pause the camera just for a second and... Uh, well, actually, maybe I can do it like this. Sometimes you just have to improvise. Looks like we might be able to use two screwdrivers just like that and work out that seized piston. Hopefully all the while not having them slip off. Starting to move slowly. Boy that's tight. Slowly coming out. There it is. You can see, hopefully, how nasty that brake fluid is dripping off. You can see a little bit inside that bore. You don't see any shiny metal. It's all nasty corroded fluid in there. I'm not sure how well I'm getting this on camera. And you can see what that piston looks like right as it came out. That's exactly what goes wrong with uh, brakes on uh, older vehicles. You don't have to have a 43-year-old vehicle. This could happen in about 10 years if you never bleed your brake system. And that's why that piston goes out when you push on the brake pedal because you have a lot of force, hydraulic force, to move the piston out but it doesn't want to return back in. It's just uh, like an engine piston, doesn't want to move back and forth freely in the bore. So it tends to ride up against that rotor like it was doing before and uh, cause a lot of heat and friction and uh, cause problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the um, other piston out of here in the same fashion. Already got that dust boot started to come off. And um, 
we'll start cleaning everything up and go in with our new seals. Okay, now we have everything disassembled, or at least almost. Here's the, uh, the two outer dust boots. And uh, this is one piston. Just want to give you guys a close-up view how corroded that is. So I have to clean that up. And here's the uh, other piston. Still pretty corroded. It's easy to see why the uh, braking system was not operating as well as it should. Although the car didn't really have any noticeable stopping problems. Except for the cherry red rotor. And uh, here's the caliper. And you can see inside that bore, you can see all kinds of uh, particulate matter in there, all kinds of debris and corrosion. You can see there's a little black band around there. That's the inner seal or piston seal to uh, provide, you know, keep the brake fluid inside from escaping and provide enough pressure. And there's the other piston bore. Still, you have some debris in there over time. You can see the inside of the bore before the seal is a lot cleaner than the bore on the outside of the seal. Very, very typical. That's where the uh, moisture entry is going to occur and um, cause a corrosion process to start and cause those pistons to start seizing up in their bores. So uh, I think what was going on, these brakes have been bled periodically, but I think what's going on is the way the calipers are designed with this internal channel that goes between these two halves, some of the fluid appears to have been trapped in there and uh, never bled out even though it looked like clean fluid was coming out. That's just horrible. And uh, that's the rag I use to uh, mop up some of the dirty brake fluids. Just really, really bad. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, take a small screwdriver and work that up in there and just get that seal out. And then we'll uh, clean this up real good. Might have to go in there with some 200 grit sandpaper or some fine steel wool. And then we'll be ready to uh, put in our new parts. Okay, now you could use, like I said earlier, a small screwdriver to uh, get the seal out. But uh, I've got a set of good quality dental picks that would do a much better job at that and this dental pick has a curved end on it and it's very sharp. I'm going to try to show you this as best I can. It's kind of hard. Uh, you want to kind of work that pick in there and turn it 90 degrees down to hook onto that seal and work it out of there. So we'll go in horizontally or actually the hook on the pick is parallel to the seal and we'll Work it in there so it's bottomed out in the in the groove. Turn it 90 degrees and grab onto it. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Gradually work that seal out. Now it's pretty much out. You can use your fingers to uh, get the rest of it out or set a needle nose pliers and pull that thing out. It's basically just an o-ring. And it uh, just rides in a groove right in here. And I'm going to go ahead and take the seal out on this side and that will complete the disassembly of the caliper as far as I want to go. There are two halves to this but the uh, shop manual says I recommend not separating these two halves because there's um, these bolts are applied at a definite torque and there may be some o-rings in here that are dried up and might get damaged if I try to pull this apart any further and I won't be able to get it back together without a leak and it's not leaking anywhere so this is as far as I'll disassemble it and um, now it'll be ready for uh, cleaning with some uh, brake cleaner and compressed air Continuing with the cleaning process, I just want to show you guys one of the pistons. 
the uh, piston is uh, all clean inside and all clean on the outside surface. Pist the pistons should be nice and shiny. The, uh, they're made out of a hardened steel with a chromium surface on here. And you can see some blemishes, but one of the important things to do or remember is to never use any abrasive of any kind on this nice, shiny, smooth surface. Not even the finest grit sandpaper or fine steel wool. You'll ruin the surface and the piston will never behave like it should ever again. The only thing you can really use on this is a uh, brake fluid, I mean I'm sorry, brake cleaner and some paper towels and just work it back and forth and get as much of the debris off of there as you possibly can which I think I've done here. <clears throat> and then you want to go inside in the same manner spray brake cleaner all up in here take a q-tip, go around the circumference, blow it out with compressed air and that's just about as uh, clean as you can get them. So the pistons are all done and uh, now we'll move on to the caliper. I did a preliminary cleaning on this caliper here just to get it to the point where I can work with it and uh, gosh hopefully you guys can see right around the uh, edges here you can hopefully see the contrast and color the outer end of this right after the seals uh, got a lot of corrosion on there and the inner surface does not so I'm going to take some fine, uh, fine grit sandpaper go around here really lightly and just clean that out as best I can and then we'll do another uh, cleaning with a uh, brake cleaner and we'll be ready to go with our new parts okay I had to come inside a little bit because it's starting to rain but that gave me the opportunity to really give a close-up of what I was just talking about you can see the uh, stark contrast between the uh, inner piston bore the uh, seal groove and the outer piston bore here and the uh, corrosion on the outside of this piston bore is uh, exactly what happens when you have the uh, outer dust boot fail like this one has. I mean it is 43 years old so it uh, definitely lasted as long as it could but um, this situation right here is why when the brake pads wear and the piston has to go out farther and farther during its travel it'll uh, bind up on this area and not return back into the bore when you release the brake pedal and uh, ride against that rotor and uh, cause the rotor to get hot. So to uh, deal with that we're going to take some 200 grit sandpaper and just work it up in there only on this outer surface here not inside and then uh, once the uh, heavy stuff has gotten rid of we'll take some ultra-fine steel wool to kind of uh, dress up the surface a little bit. This material basically is uh, machine steel. It does, it's not like the piston where it has that delicate chromium surface on there. These can be lightly sanded very carefully with um, really fine grit sandpaper and uh, steel wool unlike those pistons. And you can run your finger in here and kind of feel the difference. And one of the things you don't want to do is work on it so hard that you get rid of that sharp edge where that uh, inner seal is supposed to go. You want to stay away from that and just kind of uh, focus on the outer edge there. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that and uh, we'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, finally done with uh, all the major cleaning. I blew everything out with compressed air and went in through there one more time with some uh, brake cleaner. And uh, these piston bores are looking much, much better. That's just about as clean as I can get them without going too crazy and uh, dulling that sharp edge on the uh, inner seal there. That's the receiver end for the inner seal. So anyway, let me get this outside and we'll begin the uh, installation of all of our new components. Okay, now that everything's 100% clean and uh, all most of the corrosion removed, we're ready to put our new parts in and I uh, just want to show you guys just how easy that piston goes in and out now.
makes all the difference in the world. You guys saw how bound up they were at the beginning of the video, how it took a lot of force to get those to move at all. Now that's running just like it should. So, our kit comes with uh, two, inner, two outer dust boots and two inner seals and they actually give you a replacement cover for your bleeder screw which the car never really had, or at least not since I owned it and the bleeder screw is uh, right there and uh, don't forget to take out that bleeder screw and clean that out with some brake cleaner and compressed air as well too and also in the uh, channel that it goes in and uh, by the way these are the ATE calipers 35-29 for those that are interested. And um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start with the inner seal and put that seal right in the groove over there. And to do that we'll prep it up with some uh, fresh brake fluid, get it all lubricated. And we'll just work it in. You guys get the idea. It's going to take uh, two hands, but I basically got it started there. The reason for the brake fluid is you want to have some uh, lubrication. So that uh, sort of goes in there like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Finish putting that in and uh, get to the pistons next. Okay, now the uh, inner piston seals are all installed and uh, re lubricated with brake fluid. Um, next thing to do is to uh, go ahead with the pistons. And if you look carefully, the piston on the profile has a ridge right here, kind of like a half moon or semicircle ridge, it's a higher spot than this side over here. And what you have to do is that has to be pointing downward. So since the uh, brake line goes in there, and that's the top of the caliper, the uh, pistons would have to go in this orientation, just like that. And uh, Mercedes did that uh, to avoid um, brake squeal. It uh, compensates for the idea or the fact that the pads are going to want to tilt a little bit in the direction of the, the rotor when you apply the brake pedal. And a good trick to uh, get these pistons on as well as the uh, dust boots is to do them all at the same time. So you just want to take your dust boot flip it inside out and um, work that over the piston otherwise you'll never get it on if once the piston is already installed in the caliper so that's kind of how that works and you just want to make sure go all the way around the uh, circumference of the piston and uh, just make sure that that dust boot is seated like it should be. There we go. So now we'll do uh, one more cleaning, get my fingerprints off of it. And we'll go ahead and uh, place it in the caliper with the ridge facing downward. We'll actually depress the seal or the dust boot like that and then we'll go ahead and um, put that in. Now these have a uh, compensating mechanism inside I'll show you guys next. That's what this 
area is right in there and it makes it a little bit difficult to push the piston in so we'll have to use a C-clamp. But the uh, main thing to remember is to uh, start that piston out as evenly as you possibly can. Oh, I forgot one of the most important things. I'm going to lubricate that piston with some of this brake fluid. And then we'll be ready to go in. That'll make it a lot easier. That'll uh, make it so that seal, that inner piston seal, is not going to want to bind up and uh, come out of its groove. Okay, now we're ready. Dust boot out. Raised area of the piston facing downward. Go ahead and set that in place. And now we're ready to uh, go with the C-clamp. Sometimes you can just uh, force it down a little bit more with your hands. The main thing to remember is to uh, not get that piston cocked in its bore. And uh, let me see if I can get this camera repositioned and we'll uh, get that C-clamp on there. Alright, now that we've got our C-clamp on here, well, we want to force that piston back in, making sure that it's square and the piston is going to go in evenly. One of the things you don't want to do is just run the thing on down as fast as you can. You want to be pretty gentle with it and uh, start going in a little bit at a time and then back off, let it return a little bit and then go a little bit further and then back off. Piston comes back out just a little bit more and just kind of keep repeating that process. That way it's going to uh, minimize the chances of the uh, piston getting cocked in the bore. So you can kind of go back and forth like this and see the piston moving back in, the, in and out. That kind of uh, works it over that inner seal so that you minimize the opportunity for that seal to uh, get dislodged. So once we have the piston right about in that position there, we'll go ahead and take the C-clamp off. The piston's not fully depressed yet. This will give us a chance to uh, push this dust boot down and um, install that flush with the uh, brake caliper itself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that and then I'll force the piston back down all the way and then I'll start on the next piston. Okay, all done. This caliper is uh, all assembled. Pistons are pushed back in. And the dust boots, they basically, there's a little metal ring around there that uh, is pliable, so it just expands over that ridge and uh, sits flush against the uh, caliper housing. So you just want to make sure that that seal is perfectly parallel with the caliper and it's not, you know, sitting cocked or anything. You just want to make sure that they're all straight and level. This is the uh, brake inlet fitting right there and we made sure that the ridge on the piston is facing downward on both sides and it is. So um, this caliper is rebuilt and ready to go back in. Let me get set up outside and we'll do that. Okay, caliper is all installed and um, the um, shiny stuff that you see around the uh, brake line is actually uh, penetrating oil, combination penetrating oil and uh, metal protector. I like to uh, use this stuff because it leaves a uh, wax-like film that protects against rust. You can kind of see what it looks like on this rag. So it'll actually lubricate initially and then set up as a wax-like substance and uh, do a pretty good job of um, preventing 
uh, any corrosion from getting down in between that line and the bolt. So, and inside the threads there too. So this copper can come back off in the hopefully distant future, maybe never at all, and not have to worry about breaking that brake line. There's the uh, nice new cap for the uh, bleeder screw. And then the caliper is held on by, of course, like before, these two bolts. One bolt there and one bolt down there. It's got a tab on here that gets bent downward to keep the bolt from backing off. I'm going to leave those tabs up for now um, just so I can uh, carry on with the job and um, test drive the car. And if there's any problems, I can take that caliper back off. So now what remains to be done is to uh, put the brand new brake pads and retaining or anti-rattle springs in and um, go ahead and do the uh, replace the uh, passenger side and driver side flex lines for the brakes on the back and then I'll be done for the back and be ready to test drive this thing. So hopefully this was uh, helpful for you guys. It, um, I started this about 3 o'clock this afternoon and now it's around 6.30. It's about three and a half hours for just this one caliper, and including filming the video and everything else. Not too terribly bad. I feel a lot better about using the uh, original equipment calipers on here. It's just a personal preference of mine. If you're going to have a car this old, a uh, 43-year-old car, I want to uh, maintain the originality to the maximum extent possible, which means all the original parts, the alternator, starter, brake calipers, that kind of thing. <clears throat> you could buy these calipers brand new, but they're very, very expensive. I think they're $330 or $350 a piece from uh, ATE. So that does give you a way out if your pistons are just so far gone inside of here that there's no way to uh, get them to work properly. And you can also buy remanufactured ones, which I think are in the $60 a piece, or maybe it's more like $100, $110 a piece, somewhere around in there. But um, a little bit of your time and a, uh, I think a $15 rebuild kit for the uh, seals and things like that, and some elbow grease to uh, clean these things up, and these calipers will uh, function just like new and you'll have the satisfaction of uh, maintaining the original parts with your car. <clears throat> a lot of times these places that rebuild these calipers and other components, they'll just dump the entire thing in a media blaster and just blast the crap out of it to get all the paint off and all the grime and corrosion and things like that like I was doing by hand. But a lot of times that changes the uh, tolerances inside there between the piston bore and piston and it never really quite works like it does, or like it should to uh, OEM specifications. It'll work, but uh, not quite like it should. And if you do that enough times, you know, brake calipers and other components on the car, the car overall will tend not to drive like it used to or like it should. I want this car to drive just like it would have driven back in 1970. And the best way to do that is to... Um, Maintain the original parts that came with the car as much as you can and uh, take off as little material as you can when you do the cleaning and everything so that the tolerances and all these components are uh, within uh, factory specifications. So hopefully this video was uh, helpful to you guys. The uh, next one is going to be to uh, replace those flexible brake lines. The one on the passenger side uh, seems to be in good condition because the uh, brake fluid was bleeding out of the line when I took it off, but the uh, line on the driver's side is completely collapsed internally. So stay tuned for that video.